Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Artisan Pirate here, and in today's fun video, I want to welcome you all back, my followers and subscribers, to the Artisan Pirate YouTube channel for 2023. Last year in 2022 was the most productive year for the channel, and I want to make this year just as good, if not even more so. Now, keep in mind, weekly videos, the Monday woodworking videos, are not going to start right away. We are in winter here in North Carolina, and this shop, as you guys know, I've told you in the past, is not heated. I can tolerate the summer heat a lot better than I can tolerate the winter cold. The only heat source in this workshop is the two little heaters behind me and the wood stove behind the camera there. So it's going to be hit or miss on Monday videos going forward until the weather breaks and it's tolerable and sensible enough to be out here working. This shop isn't insulated. It's an old workshop that my grandfather built and I love it dearly. It's just like home to me. It is 12 foot wide by 24 foot long. I do wish it was a little bit wider sometimes to work with full sheet goods, but all in all, just keep that in mind as we go forward. I don't want to post this video and then it be a few weeks and people start questioning it. Just So just keep that in mind. And what better way to welcome everyone back to the YouTube channel than to do an updated shop tour. I'm not going to do a full in-depth one because I've done that last year. What I'm going to do is just hit the high spots and things that I think you guys, my followers and subscribers need to know and know about and maybe ideas I have going forward for the future. Really, really amazing. I'm going to be filming this freehand so just being mind in case you have any kind of motion sickness or anything with like wobbling. I'm trying to get steadier with that. I want to do more vlog adventures this year hopefully where I have the camera freehand like this so hopefully I get better at holding and focusing on the camera and on details and everything. I'm about to take the camera off the tripod and step outside the shop door because that's the most logical place to begin. But also keep in mind I do have some seasonal congestion. That's why I have my nice cold ice water here to help me. So if I sound short of breath or anything, it's just a seasonal congestion. My nose is stopped up and runny. So I mean it is what it is and it comes with this time of year. But we had a nice break in the weather today and I wanted to get started filming again for 2023. So let me take the camera off of the tripod and we'll head to the front door and start the tour. And we are about to enter the workshop door. There is a plastic storage bin here that I keep all the dry wood for the wood stove in. And over here to the side you will see the musical panels that I get a ton of comments on. Those were given to me and I hung them up there and they've been hanging there for several years. And I get a lot of comments on those when people stop by. We will enter the shop door here and enter my world of making and creating. Nine times out of ten when I enter the shop door, I make a beeline to my scroll saw. The scroll saw and scroll saw woodworking is primarily what I am known for. I do dabble in other ventures and everything in the woodworking medium, but this is primarily what I'm known for. This is my Delta 20 inch variable speed scroll saw and it is the workhorse of the workshop. A lot of people say the table saw is the heart of the workshop. For me, being a scroll saw woodworker, of course the scroll saw is the heart of my workshop and I keep it maintained, keep it took care of, and it's a great tool. It's got the upgraded Pegasus clamps on it from Kling Spore. They sent those to me. And what really brought me to the woodworking dance is these custom scroll saw compound cut keychains here. I've made probably, and this is without bragging, around 500 of these individual keychains. All are individually cut, all are individually handmade. There's no way to mass produce these because they're all individually hand cut on the scroll saw. I have two here, of course my name, Artisan Pirate, and then the other one says Myrtle Beach, the city I love to go to, to vacation to. Uh, again, I've made these, I've given these out, I've batched them out for people who've ordered them and used them as Christmas ornaments. Some people have used them as hangers from their rear view mirrors and their vehicles. But I always keep these on hand to remind me what got my foot in the door in the woodworking community. This uses the Steve Good scroll saw keychain pattern generator. It is a free program you can download and I've used it to full benefits and I've got comments from Steve Good himself saying what amazing work and a versatile piece of work that I've done with them. Once again this workshop is 12 foot by 24 foot built by my grandfather years and years ago and over here in the corner 
behind the door here. Now usually in the summer I'll have the door propped open with a fan, you know, just getting some circulation going, but in the winter I keep the door shut to keep the warmth in. There is my folding clamp and workbench, my six gallon shop vac, and the Wi-Fi router extender there so I can have Wi-Fi out here for some tools and also for cell service. This is my grandfather's upright Sears Craftsman drill press and it is a workhorse and a beast of a tool. It's almost as tall as me and it still works great. The light still works in it. It doesn't have no laser line up tool or anything like that but it still comes on and works great. And works for what I need it for and that's drilling all the pilot holes in scroll saw projects. Right here is my parts bin, or what I call my hardware store. It has nuts, bolts, washers, screws of varying sizes, and things like that. Of course, it's got the key rings for the custom scroll so keychains when I get an order for those. And stepping back a bit, we have the wood stove here, and this is where at 14 years old, over Christmas break, my woodworking journey began. I wanted to sit by a wood stove and make coffee the old-fashioned way and I still have that coffee pot hung up out here in the workshop and I just remember sitting around this very wood stove listening to my grandfather's stories of life and how he made things and then of course natural curiosity I noticed the tools and then he took me under his wings and introduced me to the world of woodworking but it all started here I've got a nice little wood fire going in it now but it throws off tremendous heat and keeps the shop nice and warm. And people ask me all the time, and I get comments, with the wood stove being here, does anything on the back wall or the bench or the drill press or anything get overheated? And it doesn't. It doesn't look like it on camera, but there's easily two and a half to around three foot all the way around the wood stove here. And I can go and place my hands on everything here, and nothing is warm. Nothing is overheated. This sheet of metal here is just barely got a bit of warmth it's still mainly cool but everything is okay and well protected and I keep that in mind over here we have the little shop mascot which is a tan man I bought a few years ago from another artist just supporting them here is a little Hot Wheels shelf you guys know I love to collect Hot Wheels they are very nostalgic for me and if anyone would ever want to see my full collection of Hot Wheels cars and track just let me know I'd be happy to do a video on that we have the Pirates of the Caribbean ride sign that was sent to me by a fellow woodworker and content creator, Interactive Realm, and I'll leave a link to their page down in the description box below. I'm going to be giving several shout outs in this video, but he sent me this over Christmas break. He knows I'm a diehard Pirates fan. It's a Pirates life for me, and I really, really appreciate it, and I love it, and I got it hanging proudly in the workshop. Probably going to collaborate with him later on in the year. Here is my Thomas the Tank Engine Thomas and Friends sign, and this was kind of a segue for me getting back into model railroading. I started reading more about how the original model show of Thomas the Tank Engine was made and what happened to all those props. It was really interesting for me to sit down and read and watch YouTube videos on that. And that kind of sparked my interest to get back into train stuff and model railroading. So my two things other than woodworking and traveling is Hot Wheels, Pirates, well three things, and Thomas the Tank Engine. Love pirate history as well. Moving right along, here is the sticker swap sticker box. And when I made this, when I started making videos way back in 2017, I never expected people would want my sticker. And very quickly, it filled up within six months. And now I have the sticker swap wall. Here we have the ever evolving, ever changing scroll saw workshop display wall. And a lot of these projects I have done on video and a lot of them are just me through the years it's a lot of trial and error and just learning your craft people ask me all the time do I design my patterns and I do not unfortunately this right here is the only pattern I have ever made for myself and it's the iconic Jaws movie poster and what I done was printed out the Jaws movie poster in black and white to this size here and laid a piece of tracing paper over it and just traced out what I thought would make a good scroll saw pattern and hopefully I done the iconic movie justice with this project stepping back here again This is my grandfather's workbench, and I tell everyone that comes by, if I was to ever move 
or go to a bigger shop or something, one way, shape, or form, this workbench would come with me. Underneath the workbench is a storage area. I've got my brad nailer and my air gun and their cases under here. The compound miter saw, which sadly I don't have room for a station for it. It's under there too. I usually use it outside. My dado stack for the table saw as well as the pocket hole jig is down there as well as some more paint cans and everything and I've got more up here. I'm looking for a way to store those cans. I use a ton of Rust-Oleum clear gloss. They sent me this little pistol grip handle here and here is my sanding area. You see I mainly use 100 grit sandpaper in the palm sander as I say in a lot of my videos and this little sanding mat here that keeps pieces from sliding around is just um, is kitchen drawer liner. You know, you usually just lay silverware or something on it to keep it from moving. That's all this is from the dollar store. My grandfather Sears Craftsman toolbox here, and it's got my Craftsman wrenches that were his in there, as well as the chisels and everything. Could probably do with better organization on my part, but it is what it is. This was my grandfather's workbench, and so many memories are around it and involved with it, as well as the wood stove. Here is my Longer Ray 5 laser engraver. This is a 5 watt diode laser that Longer sent me and it has been an amazing tool. And you see just a few of the things I have made. I've just recently learned thanks to a friend to use the Lightburn software so that really elevated me. This thing can laser cut cardboard. This was a basic cardboard box and you see I shrunk it down and cut it out of 3 millimeter craft plywood from Hobby Lobby and this is a Steve Good design, this amazing Grace Cross. I've dialed it in to cut out one quarter inch plywood here. This is the Coast Guard logo. And then I have a video on completing this, this Christmas train. But all of the stuff you see right here, and this train just has some beautiful detail. The rest of it's in the house still. This is just a train in the tender. Longer sent me their honeycomb spool board, and that really elevated everything. I've made some dice here, you know, just playing around and learning how to dial everything in. And I really love it. I've got a little USB powered fan here that blows into the laser and everything goes out the back here. And that's just a simple bathroom vent I got off Amazon for 25 bucks. And it sucks out 99% of the fumes. And it's just a little pull chain there to turn it on and off. And everything is sucked out the back of the shop. I usually have my laptop sit here on top of the toolbox to run the files from. But one good thing about this laser as opposed to others is it has Wi-Fi capabilities and can also be ran off an SD card to where it, you can just move it around. Like if you wanted to engrave on a table like a crest or something, you could move the whole machine there and not have to worry about being anchored to a laptop or something. But really, really cool. Here is a chair just for me to sit and take a break, as well as a fire extinguisher. Woodworking can generate a lot of heat, especially when you're milling up hardwood um, and some softwoods. And of course, with the laser being right here, and of course the wood stove, it just makes sense to have a fire extinguisher that's fully charged nearby at all times. Here is my current stock of one quarter inch material. This I get at Lowe's in four by eight foot sheets, and this is just what I have right here, what was left over from last year, and I just keep that on stock because that's primarily what I cut everything out of. Here is the Win 8 inch by 10 inch bench top lathe. It is a variable speed lathe, and I will say right now, if you're wanting to do more than basic pin turning, I could not recommend this lathe. I use basic Harbor Freight lathe chisels, although I have upgraded to a set of carbide tips and got a proper bowl gouge here to learn with, but I have quickly maxed out what this lathe can do. I have made some beautiful goblets on it, as you can see here, and I've made some beautiful pins on it as well. I even took one pin to the laser engraver. This was hard maple right here, and laser engraved my name in it, and here's all the little sandpapers and all that goes, you know, with just sanding everything. A very good friend of mine, Sam Knight at Knighthood Creations came by and gave me a crash course on bowl turning. He also taught me how to use the Lightburn software over there on the laser and he showed me how to turn a bowl. He made this beautiful bowl here and then I was overzealous and before I had the bowl gouge, it was on back order, I turned one and it looks more like a 
um, dog bowl more or less with how it just curves suddenly right there and I've done this with traditional tools and I know that is a no-no the more that I learn now but then after I got the bowl gouge I learned how to do and I think this is cherry wood here but it turns so smoothly with the bowl gouge and the carbide tip tools but I'm learning and I am gonna want to upgrade to maybe a midi lathe and put it here when the shop was the shop as I know it when my grandfather had it it was a simple well not a simple it was a very dangerous craftsman radial arm saw sitting right here and it hung out to like here and my grandfather had it supported and it was just this massive noisy tool and I seen it kick on him one time and then I'm like no I don't want to use this tool but that is what I learned how to do ripping and cross cuts on was a radial arm saw I still have it it's in a storage building on the property and once again it's one of those things if I would ever upgrade to a bigger maybe wider shop I might put the radial arm saw back just for nostalgia purposes but not use it because they are versatile tools although dangerous they are versatile tools in their own right this is the long workbench that a lot of the tools are on here my grandfather built these so these are not built for comfort of my height you can see they start over there in the corner and that this bench comes all the way down and what was sitting right here originally again was the radial arm saw but now it's home to the lathe here is the rigid belt and spindle sander here is the spindles for it it easily and quickly changes out my mom got this for me for my birthday and I really really appreciate it and everything but really really cool now if I'm just gonna quickly just flush something up here that's gonna take maybe 10 seconds I don't move it but if I am gonna be at it for a prolonged amount of time I will of course unplug it and move it over to the table saw clamp it down and hook the shop vac to it and work from there but a lot of the times it's usually just something quick I'm flush sanding and it will just I'll just get it right here and I'll suck up the sawdust behind it afterwards going back to the lathe I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Sam Knight at Knighthood Creations I will once again leave a link to his page down in the description box below and all these people I'm giving shout outs to please go and follow them here's a buddy of mine Bill up in Pittsburgh he cosplays as a pirate just like me and does a ton of events really good friend of mine up in Pittsburgh and I hope to meet him face to face one day instead of just chatting through text but really really cool moving right along is my grandfather Sears Craftsman router table with Sears Craftsman router I don't use the router a lot but when I need it it's here I've got an assortment of bits stored away and another box of bits elsewhere and it's unplugged and this is another tool that if I know I'll be using it a long time I will set up the folding workbench and go outside with it and run stuff out there because it's just such a messy tool this is one tool that I really really want to upgrade there is a 3d printed height gauge for dialing in how to set up the router I 3d printed this a few years ago haven't used it much but again when I need it it's there here is some trinkets that my friend Marty sent me he has the YouTube channel Marty's Ramblin again link him down in the description as well but he sent me these beautiful items here and even this piece it looks cut out of a piece of countertop but I appreciate anything anyone ever sends me and I will display it in some way shape or form out here in the workshop and give you guys the proper shout out that you deserve for supporting me we're gonna step back here here is some dry wood for the wood stove I keep it close at hand and more scrap wood here and there is my air compressor that was my grandfather's and I keep it close to the CNC machine because they kind of work in tandem whenever I sand something or you know carve something you need to blow some of the sawdust away and it's easily there on hand this Rockler Shark Pro Plus next wave CNC machine was given to me by a very good friend of mine he was a teacher and when he moved a couple years ago he had two CNC machines and no longer needed the second one and he'd give it to me and the way my nature is when someone gives me something I give back with it so I've made so many projects on this primarily V carving like this Pirates Life sign here that I've designed I've made so many things and give back to organizations and nonprofits like the Boys and Girls Club I've made signs and give them to bands like the Catfine 
the Cat 5 band that came through one year. They put on a great show and also the iconic beach music band, the Embers. I've made stuff for them. I've also done some pocket cutting. I designed this pumpkin candy dish and done this. Sadly, there was no video as I was learning and I might go back and make another one of these this fall just to show you the process as well as a butler tray here. This is for men or even women, you know, to put their wallets, jewelry, a loose change in on their bedside table at the end of the day and everything is comfortably kept right here in a little tray and there's some beautiful wood grain there and of course me personalizing everything to me I had to name it the Jaws machine and I've got the Jaws head there and there's another one back there behind the router I've got a pirate skull and crossbone there and my dad got me some next um, some tools today carbide tools for using on the CNC machine they are high quality bits and it's unplugged right now but there's the v-carve bit that I use to make signs like this here and they're a great great company and I highly recommend them for all of your CNC machine needs stepping back is my artisan pirate banner this is of course also my sticker logo that I sent out and also several hats from companies that send me things again if you guys send me something it's going to be displayed I'm going to give it a shout out I'm going to show you guys all the love that you guys show me and just return it and keep the community growing and moving there's another hardware bin that was given to me as well as a sign table saw blade that I've done at the last Maker Faire Burlington North Carolina had sadly this was before what happened in the world in 2020 and there hasn't been another one since hopefully one day it will come back but it was a great keepsake to have and just shows all the maker and creative nature in the town of Brunton, North Carolina. Here is a bigger shop vac that I used to connect to my cobalt table saw and that is one of the bigger changes this year. I now have this tradesman table saw. It is on loan. My cobalt saw bit the big one and finally just died on me. And this one is on loan for me. There is no time frame to get it back. The man that loaned it to me said that, that, look, use it as long as you need it. You might end up just keeping it when you get a new one because he only used it like once a year. So I'm happy to be able to keep going, but I am looking to invest in a bigger and better table saw going forward. And what my eyes are on is the Delta table saw. And what I'd like to do is take the router and put it in a wing of the table saw if that's possible that would free up space here where I could move the sander down and put my benchtop ground grinder that is stored away right here for sharpening the chisels because I've got to get better at that if I'm going to proceed in pursuing the wood turning hobby but those are just ideas for me here is my grandfather's Delta 16 inch motorized bandsaw it's one of those old three wheel designs and it still works great I am no bandsaw expert again Knighthood Creation showed me how to properly tension the blade and it works great it's running great I can tell it's losing some of its power just with age so maybe an upgrade for a bandsaw will be down the road or maybe just you know discard the bandsaw entirely I would hate to do that and if I ever decided to get rid of it I'd probably just store it instead of selling it because again this was one of my grandfather's original tools and you don't want to get rid of things that help build you if you know what I mean and still runs great over here is speaking of my grandfather a memorial to him as he got older in life he was one of those people that did not like his picture taken so one of the few pictures I do have with him is when I was a little bitty kid there he worked at a feed and seed store and that's him showing me the first of what would be many little chickens in my life and he was just a, a farm grown country person he loved the outdoors he loved to hunt he loved to fish he loved you know animals like cows horses you know pigs chickens geese things like that but he taught me so much and no matter where I go in this world he will always be my first and greatest woodworking teacher he was a member of the beekeepers association and I remember taking honey off a hive with him being scared to death to do it but I had on the hood the whole nine yards and he just had on a hat you know he was just comfortable with them like that he was also a world champion rabbit breeder he won several trophies and that is his world champion rabbit breeding trophy there that he had and over here is just some clamps and everything as well as my Craftsman new line of Craftsman from Lowe's 20 volt tools and I've 3d printed 
some battery holders here to hold the batteries once they're fully charged or just as I get more and more batteries I will continue to print things here is just all of my clamps that I clamp a lot of my stuff together with and right here is my scrap bin it is overflowing now because I have not been out here making a lot of sawdust so I will need to purge this real soon of course when I get to small scraps like this little piece of oak here of course this will more than likely end up being kindling for the wood stove but I hardly ever throw anything away back behind the little bucket with the clamps and the strips of wood in it is my stash of gloves for staining the sponge brushes and in this little tote right here is a ton of patterns from scroll saw woodworking and crafts magazine and also creative and woodworks and crafts magazine if you guys would like to see me tackle some of those more advanced patterns this year let me know it's just that sometimes i cannot properly credit the proper author of the pattern because i no longer have the magazines i do they're just in storage and i don't rightly know where they're at if i did i'd go find every one of them and reacquaint them with their pattern pull out sections but if you guys want to see me tackle some more advanced patterns that are in those just let me know here is my craftsman stool that i sit in to do scroll sawing i'll move it over here is the cooler i think this is new from last year's tour i can't quite remember and right there is my grinder that i said that i'd love to get on a bench i just move it when it's time to sharpen chisels and put it right back but i keep bottles of water out here for guests if they come over or anything like that over here at the scroll saw once again we just have like an homage to things that inspire me and stuff from my childhood you know just things that I've seen people have a TV behind their scroll saw and if I had one of those I would never get no work done I'm sorry I would be binge watching history documentaries or watching some train documentary or something like that you know but I have a speaker here I have a the heater of course is here now during the summer I'll have a fan there blowing on me while I'm scrolling and I've always got my dust mask close at hand when I'm scrolling but I have just a classic iPod here and whatever mood I am in is what music I'll listen to I've got it piped back to the amplifier here I've got my retro plasma ball there my 3d printed Tyrannosaurus Rex skull my Jolly Roger skull my shop clock right here as well as Mac tonight from McDonald's I love the classic food logos like that and he was always one of my favorites just because of how goofy he looked so it's kind of like he's serenading me while I'm doing the scroll saw work through the speaker right here is a sign that was handmade for me by Lou at Crosscut Carvings I think that's his page again I'm gonna link all these down in the description box below and he brought this to me he wanted a scroll saw lesson and when he came from Raleigh North Carolina about an hour away he came bearing gifts and he brought me this I was blown away with the artistry of this Lou does not have a CNC machine he hand routes all of this with a router he does some amazing and fantastic router work he's recently got a scroll saw and I'm willing to help him in any way shape or form to help him elevate his skill on it but really really amazing work and it's just beautifully detailed and I've got it hanging there and it's in most of the intros to the videos but again the cooler under here I keep water in the craftsman tools are there there's old woodworking books that I had when I first started I'd go to thrift stores and find them for a couple bucks and pick them up my original banner that I got from Vista print that used to hang on the sticker swap sticker wall and that is where we will wrap this video up here is the sticker swap sticker wall as I said earlier in the video the sticker swap sticker box filled up completely and then I had to go to the wall and my goal would be to have this whole wall filled with stickers and if you guys ever want to sticker swap with me just know all you got to do is contact me and I'll be happy to get the artisan pirate sticker out to you guys and I'll send a note of encouragement you know just supporting the community and of course when I get your sticker I will give you a shout out and once I get enough stickers I'll do a sticker swap shout out video where I'll add more to the sticker swap sticker wall but really really cool once again this is the world of the artisan pirate this is just where I love to come and make and create and everything like that also up here is the air filtration unit I always have air moving in this workshop It's important again as I said during the summer I have the door wide open with fans blowing as much you know 
of the exhaust out of the shop. During the summer, I will put a oscillating fan here to kind of keep air moving, and then the air filtration unit will also be running at all times. And there you see the pirate flag hanging up in the rafters. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I am going to be putting the camera back on the tripod, and we will wrap up the video. And that is the Artisan Pirate Workshop Tour for 2023. I hope I didn't bore you guys too much. It's just so much to see and take in. I've had several people come by, and every time they come by on a repeat visit, they'll nudge me and say, hey, I didn't see this before. I didn't see that before. And I'm always trying to maximize my workflow, you know, to make things better and make things flow better for me as a maker and a creator. I'm doing this. I'm having a blast doing it. I look forward to all the videos in 2023. Once again, keep Keep in mind, weekly videos are not starting right up. We just had a good break in the weather where it was comfortable for me to come out here and film the first video and welcome you all back to the channel in 2023. If you guys ever need to reach out to me and ask me a question about the scroll saw, the laser, anything like that, or just me in general, my social medias are always wide open. I do not turn anything to private. That way you can easily reach out to me either through email, through a private message on Instagram, or anything like that. I love interacting with everyone and just talking about them and getting ideas. What do you guys want to see me do or make in the year 2023? Uh, have done a lot on the scroll saw there's even more to do there's always something new to learn and it's such a versatile tool and i try to you know kind of nudge people to try it you know it's such relaxing and very therapeutic for me i think i do my best thinking when i'm at my scroll saw that is just me personally i can put on the, the ear protection put on the dust mask put on some good music on the ipod and just zone out and get lost that's just the level i'm at on my scroll saw i know a beginner might not feel comfortable zoning out that's just where i'm at i've been scrolling since I was 14 years old and you know I'm a lot older now and I'm still constantly learning that is what I love about this platform that is what I love about the form of woodworking and the woodworking community is that there's always something new and innovative to try and that's what keeps me starry-eyed looking at everything like a child you know just in amazement of everything if you're new here please subscribe to the channel and also follow me over on instagram at artisan pirate links to all my social medias as well as everyone i give a shout out to will be linked down in the description box below this video i look forward to a great year in 2023 if there's anything you really want to see me do this year please let me know i am going to be doing some more travel vlogs to get better filming you know like while I'm on the go I'm also going to be doing some more shorts some more train room videos and more Wednesday videos let's get it rocking and rolling I appreciate you all thank you for tuning in and remember guys if I can make it or do it so can you I'm the artisan pirate take care and I'll see you guys real soon